Francesca has been the apple of my eye in season 3 of Bridgerton. Yes, I love Penelope and I'm glad that she is finally getting the love she has been craving for years. That being said, her romance with Colin is not exactly what I hoped for her. It feels rushed and even fake at times. She seems happy though, so good for her. Nevertheless, I'm happy that the showrunners provided us with a sub-romance that we can root for other than Penelope and Colin. And in that department, my beloved Francesca shined. She is beautiful, elegant, smart, talented, and kind. She is the perfect Regency lady that we are all used to reading about in Jane Austen's books. In fact, she feels like the perfect combination of the famous Bennet sisters, Jane, Mary, and even a touch of Elizabeth. She has Jane's beauty, Mary's appreciation for art and self-enclosed traits, and Elizabeth's desire for intellectual connection alongside love. When you match her with a man like John, we are ending up with the perfect romance that Bridgerton season 3 was in desperate need of. Well, at least this was how I felt until I read her book and found out about her real love story. There is a caller here. Yes, bring him in. Are you looking for someone, Miss Featherington? There is Lord Kumartin. Miss Francesca? Miss Francesca. Just a disclaimer, this video is full of spoilers about Julia Quinn's book, When He Was Wicked, and has the potential to spoil the future episodes of the Bridgerton Netflix series as well, so you've been warned. As you all know, Francesca has become the sparkle of Queen Charlotte this season after her debut to society as an eligible marriage candidate. However, unlike other Bridgerton siblings, Francesca does not enjoy being the center of attention, attending balls to have one dance after another, and having meaningful conversations for hours. Instead, she wants to enjoy the beauty of silence, have peace of mind, play piano, and appreciate art whenever she can. I realize that some fans are speculating about her being on the autism spectrum. Personally, I'm not sure, but regardless, I adore her gentle soul. To be honest, it is a fresh breath of air to see someone enjoying different things than the rest of the society while also trying her best not to be an outcast. Like for instance, Eloise also does not like anything society expects from her, but she's also very much vocal about this to the point of facing the risk of being an outcast if necessary. She has a more rebellious soul more than anything. And I love it for her. Francesca, however, does not refuse the expectations altogether. She accepts the expectation of marriage and is willing to comply with that, and yet she wishes it to be done on her own terms. She secretly desires to find someone who will share her gentle soul rather than getting married with the most eligible bachelor of the season possible. And as we all watched in season 3 part 1, she finds her soul match in John. John is very similar to Francesca in a lot of ways. He also sees the beauty in silence, does not like to socialize unless it's necessary, and replaces words with gentle gifts that reveals his true feelings. Honestly, watching them sit side by side in silence was one of the most refreshing things this season. It was also unexpectedly realistic. After all, not every love story has to be filled with drama. In fact, in real life, most love stories seek this tranquility and peace more than anything, and we rarely see these types of quiet love stories represented on TV. That being said, the book that Francesca's love story was being told suggests that this peaceful romance is about to face tragedy in the worst form. Yes, Francesca indeed marries John only two months after meeting him, so there is a high chance we will see her wedding at the end of this season. However, after only two years of marriage, John dies tragically, making Francesca a widow at the age of 22. And then her fate completely shifts. John's cousin Michael sees Francesca hours before her wedding and desperately falls in love with her. Yes, he has no chance of pursuing her, so he witnesses the love of his life getting married to his cousin. After John's death, Michael becomes the Earl of Kilmartin. However, he allows Francesca to continue to handle the Kilmartin household, as he goes to India for four long years. After four years, Francesca is finally ready to embrace love once again, going to London in search of a new match. Michael also returns from India, eager to see Francesca once again, while well, the rest is history. For the rest of the book, we read the love story between Francesca and Michael, and honestly, they are very cute. 
Nevertheless, not gonna lie, finding out that John was not Francesca's the one caught me off guard a little bit. I don't know why I was so invested in their love story, but I was not expecting to read about her love life with John's cousin, whom we are yet to meet in Bridgerton season 3, that's for sure. But what do you think? Did you also think that John and Francesca are the perfect match for each other? Are you surprised to hear how her love story evolves? Do you think the Netflix show will follow the book's footsteps when it comes to her love story? Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you watched the video until this point, leave me a piano emoji to appreciate Francesca's talent. Thank you so much for watching, see you in the next one.